Hello and welcome back to the Central Nervous System Pharmacology Masterclass where we talk about all the medications that work on the central nervous system. And here we will talk about the tramadol. Tramadol is another synthetic opioid medication. And here we will explain the pharmacokinetics, the mechanism of action, the therapeutic uses, the adverse effects, and the contraindications of this medication. You can always use the chapters in the video description to skip to other parts of this video. Regarding the pictures, the picture on the left is for the tramadol chemical structure. The black spheres are for the carbon atoms. The white spheres are for the hydrogen atoms. The blue sphere is for the nitrogen atom. And the red spheres are for the oxygen atoms. And the right picture is for the oral formula of the tramadol. So let's start with an overview of the tramadol. So tramadol is a synthetic opioid analgesic medication. It is synthesized in 1963 in Germany and used commercially in 1977 under trade name, which is Tramal. And tramadol is famous for producing less euphoria compared to other opioid agonists. And that's why it is much less addictive than the other opioids. Now let's explain where the tramadol sits in relation with other opioids. So generally speaking, we have the natural, we have the semi-synthetic, and we have the synthetic opioids. Examples for the natural are the morphine and the codeine. Examples for the semi-synthetic are the heroin and the hydromorphone. And the synthetic, we have the agonists, we have the antagonist, and we have the mixed agonist antagonist. With the natural and the semi-synthetic, both of these families are only agonists. And for the synthetic, we mentioned that we have agonist antagonist and mixed agonist antagonist. So in the agonist, we have the mepridine family, and we have the methadone, and we have the tramadol. So tramadol sits in the agonist synthetic opioids. Regarding the pharmacokinetics of the tramadol, it is available as oral, intravenous, intramuscular, and rectal formulas. It is well absorbed for the oral formula. The oral bioavailability is about 70%, and the rectal bioavailability is about 77%, and you know that the intramuscular and intravenous bioavailability is 100%. It undergoes extensive metabolism via the CYP2D6 in the liver, leading to desmethyl tramadol, which has more affinity to mu receptors and thus it is more active and lead to most of the tramadol analgesic effects. So when the tramadol is ingested into the body, the parent drug, the tramadol drug, would not cause as much as analgesic effect as the metabolites of this drug. So the dismethyl tramadol does the most of the effect. And some people has different variations of this enzyme, the CYB2D6 enzyme, that converts tramadol into inactive metabolites with no analgesic action. So the analgesic effect that comes from tramadol is quite different from person to person. Here we have pictures of the oral formula and the intravenous intramuscular formula. It is executed through the kidney and tramadol elimination half-life is about 9 hours. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the tramadol. So tramadol binds to opioid receptors, especially the mu receptors, but it has low affinity to these receptors. It undergoes extensive metabolism via the CYP2D6, leading to active metabolite, which is the dismethyl tramadol that we already talked about, which has more affinity for mu receptors, which lead to it is analgesic effects. So most of the analgesic effects are coming from the metabolite, which is the dismethyl tramadol. Now tramadol also block the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine, so it increases their levels 
and may lead to serotonin syndrome. So it works as uh, a blocker for the early uptake of these uh, hormones. And this is the opposite to morphine because morphine decreases the norepinephrine and the tramadol is the opposite. So it would increase the serotonin and the norepinephrine. And this would lead to neuropsychiatric effects that we will talk about in the adverse effects section of this video. Now let's talk about the pharmacologic effects of the tramadol. So when tramadol activate the opioid receptors, it lead to several central effects. They include analgesia, and tramadol has one-tenth of the analgesic potency of the morphine. So the morphine potency is 10 times stronger than the tramadol. And it means that tramadol has equal potency with the betadine and the codeine. And tramadol analgesia lasts for six hours. Tramadol also leads to euphoria, which is a pleasant sensation felt by the patient. And it is less euphoria than other opioids. That is why the tramadol is less addictive than other opioids. It also leads to sedation, which is drowsiness or feeling sleepy and it leads to respiratory depression because of the inhibition of the respiratory center and it is less than the morphine. It also leads to cough suppression because of the inhibition of the cough center. It leads to nausea and vomiting because of the activation of the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the brainstem. It leads to meiosis, which is construction of the pupil. It also leads to pruritus, which is due to histamine release associated with the tramadol ingestion. This picture shows the pupil construction associated with the tramadol use. This patient took 150 milligrams of tramadol and after that dose they have meiosis. Now activation of these opioid receptors also lead to several peripheral effects, including effects on the cardiovascular system in form of bradycardia and hypotension, GIT system in form of constipation, respiratory system in form of bronchoconstruction, urinary system, it may lead to urine retention because of the increase of bladder tone and increase the urethral sphincter tone, which ultimately may lead to urine retention. And the immune system also affected, there is decrease in immunity because of the inhibition of the lymphocytes. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the tramadol. So it is used in treatment of moderate to severe pain. The analgesic effects start after one hour of ingestion and it lasts for six hours as we mentioned. So the half-life was nine hours, the duration of action was six hours and it starts after one hour of ingestion. The tramadol is used as a second line in treatment of fibromyalgia, the first line being either pregabalin or duloxetine. And it is also used in treatment of refractory restless leg syndrome. Other opioids also effective in treatment of this condition, but since the tramadol is less addictive, so it is best for this condition. Now let's talk about the adverse effects of the tramadol. It leads to nausea and vomiting, it leads to dry mouth, it leads to headache, drowsiness due to its suppressive effect on the central nervous system, it leads to respiratory depression because of the inhibition of the respiratory center, as we mentioned. Tramadol also leads to tolerance. Tolerance means that with recurrent use of tramadol, there is diminishing analgesic effect because of the neuroadaptation and the receptor upregulation. This would lead to a certain dose of tramadol being less effective with time. So if it was good yesterday, it would be bad today because of the neuroadaptation and the receptor upregulation. And the patient have to increase the dose in order to achieve the same effects. Tramadol also leads to physical dependence. Physical dependence means that there is physiological adaptation to tramadol with recurrent use, that if the patient stops the tramadol suddenly, there would be 
a withdrawal symptoms. There is also numbness, tingling, paresthesia, tinnitus due to increased serotonin and norepinephrine because remember it, re it inhibits the reuptake of these hormones so they would accumulate and they would lead to numbness, tingling, paresthesia, tinnitus. And this also lead to psychiatric symptoms like hallucinations, paranoia, anxiety, confusion for the same reason. It may induce seizures in epileptic patients and this is a relative contraindication. So if the patient have epilepsy, uh, administering a tramadol for them may lead to seizure. And there is an important point to mention that administration of naloxone can only partially reverse tramadol toxicity. So if the patient has respiratory depression from tramadol and we give them naloxone, the respiratory depression may not be relieved by that and we have to put the patient on a ventilator for some period of time. So this picture here is of the side effects of the tramadol. So central, as we mentioned, there's hallucinations, dizziness, drowsiness, insomnia, headache, nervousness, agitation. Regarding the nose, there is sores, the mouth, there is swollen tongue or lips, and there is sores and dryness. The swollen tongue is from the histamine release. And in the skin, we find hives, rash, itching, sweating, and chills. Regarding respiratory system, there is difficulty breathing because of the bronchoconstriction. Regarding the intestine, there might be diarrhea or constipation. Hands, feet, ankles, or lower legs, there might be swelling because of the water retention associated with the tramadol use. Remember that the opioid agonist, they lead to decrease the renal function and lead to more water retention. They also increase the antidiuretic hormone and they lead also to more water retention, which may lead to edema. So yeah. Systemic, there might be flu-like symptoms, the eyes, sores and swelling, the face, there might be swelling, the throat, sores, difficulty swallowing, hoarseness. Regarding the muscles, there might be seizures, as we mentioned, tremor, tightness, weakness, those are symptoms of the serotonin. Regarding the stomach, there is heartburn or indigestion, there is nausea and vomiting. Regarding the interactions, the tramadol interacts with other medications that increase serotonin levels such as the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and they may lead to serotonin syndrome. So if we administer tramadol with an SRI, there is increased risk of serotonin syndrome. Finally, let's talk about the contraindications. Pregnancy and lactation, because tramadol might lead to neonatal withdrawal syndrome. So it is contraindicated in pre pregnancy and lactation. And it is contraindicated in children under 12 and elderly due to high risk of respiratory depression. And it is contraindicated in liver and kidney failure because of the accumulation and toxic effects. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon. Link provided in the description of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.